Hi everyone, so I'm back today with a Q&A. I was asking on Instagram if you had any questions and quite a few of you have asked questions on here. So I've got myself a cup of tea in my little Emma Bridgewater mummy cup, which I got for Mother's Day. And I've got my Instagram here, so let me just pull up these questions. Okay, so first question is, how does self-care look for you when you need time for yourself? Okay, so if I am feeling overwhelmed or stressed and I feel like I really need a little bit of self-care, the best thing that I find for me is to go for a walk with my family. I like to have my husband and my children with me and we're very fortunate that we live right next to the beach so we can go for a walk along the beach or the beach banks if we want to go like along the cliff tops. We live about an hour and a half from the most beautiful part of the country in my opinion which is the Lake District so we can head over there and just kind of spend some time in God's creation and look out at lakes and all of the beautiful hills and things. Um, there's a gorgeous waterfall in the Lake District called Aero Falls, which we visit frequently and it's just such a calm and relaxing space. So if I have a choice, that is what I would prefer to do. We also have something called a Dean nearby, which is like a forest, the woods. I love to go for walks down there. Um, so that's my favorite thing to do, usually with the coffee in hand. But if that's not realistic or I don't have enough time, my favourite thing to do is have some chocolate, have a cup of tea and just sit in silence, wherever that may be. Those are my two favourite things to do. And then other things that I like to do is maybe go for a drive, read a good book. Um, those are kind of things that I like to do for self-care. And I find that starting my mornings off with reading my Bible and spending time with God is usually key to keeping myself on track for the rest of the day. If I don't get to do that, I feel like I haven't had any self-care first thing on a morning. So I usually have self-care without even caught, like realizing that's what it is by having some devoted time with the Lord. I'm with the Lord all day, obviously, and he's always with me and we're always talking. But to have that specific time on a morning is probably the best self-care that I, the best self-care that I could ever have or that you could ever have too. So I highly recommend carving out that time just to spend with him. Okay, hope that answered your question. Okay, how do you balance motherhood, family, working and time with God? Okay, so I don't feel like I ever need to balance God into the equation. I feel like God is always part of my life. He's always there. The only thing, like I said in the previous question, is that I do try and carve out that special time with him on a morning. And that tends to be before my children and husband wake up. But if they are awake, I'll wait until everybody's sitting down, eating their breakfasts, and then I'll pull out my Bible and I'll just read it while everyone's sitting and eating. Um, and I usually enjoy my cup of tea then as well. And then my family with working, sorry, it's time to take out the tea bag. Um, I'm just drinking these women's, I'm drinking this women's tea, which I had for the first time yesterday and I actually really enjoyed it. It's actually really nice and refreshing. So I shall be enjoying this as we chat. Um, so, so with work and family, this is something that I've struggled with for years. If you've watched me for a while, you'll know yourself. I've been into work, I've been out of work, I quit my teaching job, I've gone back into teaching, I tried office work, I tried being a stay-at-home mum, I've tried it all. At the moment, I do feel like I have a good balance, which is I work on a morning, and my youngest goes to nursery on a morning. So we don't kind of miss each other there anyway because he would be in nursery. So he's in nursery, I'm at work. When it's time for him to come home from nursery, it's time for me to say goodbye to my class. Then I drive home and I pick him up from my parents' house because they go and pick him up from nursery. So I don't feel like I'm missing out on any time with him at the moment because he will be at nursery anyway. Because in the UK, you're entitled to 15 free hours of education and most people send their children to nursery because it's really good for their social development and just gives a good kickstart to their education ready for school when they turn four so I feel like I'm talking really fast and here. like let me just have a sip of my tea so I feel like I'm okay at work on a morning because he's in nursery anyway and my oldest son is at school all day anyway so he wouldn't be at home with me he's off learning but what I do love is that I'm always back to pick him up from school on a night time which is nice so if I want to take him to school I can because they have a breakfast club so I can get him in early and still get to my school in time or if we're having a slower morning my husband will take him and then I can pick him up and then in September my youngest will be starting school so they'll both be at school all day and we have considered whether I should go back to work at full time at that point or whether I should just keep working part time and the school that I'm currently at offered me a job so I was there as a substitute teacher but now they've offered me a job until the end of 
next school year. So that means I have the whole of the next school year from September this year till July next year where I can work part time and then I can kind of still work on my YouTube on an afternoon and things. And if this grows to a level where I don't have to work, that is what I would rather do. So I'd rather have this channel as kind of a ministry, um, but this channel would kind of have to take off for that to happen. So for now, I'm just gonna stick with the plan, continue working at the school I'm working at for the next year, and then we'll and then we'll reassess kind of when that's when that contract's up. So let me just check I'm answering this question. So yeah, I do feel like I have a good balance at the moment. Don't get me wrong, sometimes I feel like my workload is high and I'm not spending as much time as I'd like with my family. And sometimes I feel like work is low and I'm spending a lot of time with my family. And yeah, it's just kind of balancing those scales all of the time, but that's life, isn't it? Okay, so the next question is what hobbies do you have? I feel like for years, when I first became a mum, I had no clue what my hobbies were anymore. It was like, what do I do with my life? And I think that's how I got sucked into MLMs with Arbonne, because I had nothing happening in my life other than being a mother, and that gave me something to do. So just be aware of that. If you are a mother, watch out for those MLMs, because they'll be after you. But anyway... Um, I feel like now my hobbies are pretty clear. So this for one is definitely a hobby making YouTube videos. I definitely don't make a lot of money from YouTube. So this is totally something that I would consider a hobby, but hopefully it will end up becoming more of an income for me. And you know, anyway, um, another hobby of mine is reading. I absolutely love to read. My favorite things to read are usually Christian related books sad i know but that's just what i love to read and and i've also really been getting into um taylor jenkins read i've read a lot of her books lately and i've really enjoyed every single one that i've read so i definitely do like reading fiction as well but yeah i tend to prefer to read things where i'm actually learning something um especially if it's about god i find that really fascinating as a family we love to go out on walks and my husband is really into hiking and he's trying to get me to go on some hikes with him so we're trying to sort of start training our children to walk further distances because at the moment they can probably walk about a mile maybe a mile and a half before they'll start twisting that their legs are tired so we're trying to kind of build up their stamina another hobby of mine is bible journaling and planning i love planning i have if you know me i've got a huge collection of filofaxes planners notepads i'm a little bit obsessed with kind of stationery and anything to do with that i think that is what got me into teaching if i'm honest with you more than the children it was the fact that i could have color coordinated files highlighters pens notepads the lot and my classroom is very organized also because that's just the type of person i am i love organizing things so yeah those are kind of my hobbies um, in a nutshell, that's everything that I love to do. I also love to bake, but I wouldn't call it a hobby because it's something that I do once in a blue moon, but I do love to bake as well. Okay, so next question. Could do with some Bible study tips to help get motivated, please. Okay, so this could be actually a whole video on its own, but just off the top of my head, some Bible study tips that I would give is to always pray before you study whatever it is that you want to study in your Bible. Try and get a study Bible because that has so many great notes and it also gives you context. I'm just looking to see if I've got one here, but I haven't. Um, it also gives you context before you read the book. So say we're going to study Ephesians. If you've got a study Bible, before you get into chapter one of Ephesians, it'll tell you that Ephesians was written to explain some of the great themes and doctrines of Christianity. It'll tell you that it was written to the people of Ephesus, which was a city in Turkey. And I've actually been there. You can go and visit it. But if you've got a study Bible, it might show you some images of Ephesus and it kind of just really helps you understand the book because it gives you so much information first before you even start reading chapter one so you're kind of like all right so it was written to these people it's explaining these things this is what the city looks like this is where it is in the world the author's Paul it might tell you a little bit about Paul and who he was so it gives you a lot of kind of background information so I definitely highly recommend a study bible if you are serious about bible study um, some other great tips are to grab a pen or a highlighter and just underline anything that is important to you. Don't worry about it being perfect. In my experience, nobody opens up my Bibles and looks through them apart from me. And if anybody did, it would be my husband or my children, which I honestly don't mind them seeing what I've written in my Bible. And hopefully one day it'll really encourage my children if they open my Bible and see my notes. So I personally would just say, go for it and start highlighting anything that's important to you or writing beside it little things 
things that um, you think it could mean, write down any questions and pray to God about them, all that type of stuff. I also have, which I've shown, I also have, which I've shown before, this Bible journal, which I just got off Amazon, and you can just and you can just kind of journal things that you're learning as you are reading in your Bible. Um, or you could write down prayer requests and things as you're going. And I would just recommend that you just go slowly through whatever it is that you're wanting to study. Um, some Bible scholars that I can definitely recommend are Chuck Missler. He's on YouTube. He does a video called The Bible in 24 Hours. And he works through the whole Bible in 24 sessions an hour each long. So there's one on Genesis and he kind of talks all the way through what's going on in Genesis and you get some excellent notes and insight into the book of Genesis. Things that I had no clue about, like when God sent the angels out of heaven with Satan, that some of these angels had babies with humans, which became the giants. Really interesting. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, Chuck Missler is fantastic. He is no longer with us, he's now with the Lord, but he is an amazing Bible teacher and he is highly educated. So do, so sometimes you are a little bit like, what and I, I often have to pause and rewind just to double check what he said because he does use a lot of big words and things, but he is an incredible Bible teacher. So I would definitely recommend him. And I also really like J.D. Farag. He has an app where he's working through the Bible kind of verse by verse. Um, so I could recommend him. Who else can I recommend? Um, I think for now I'll just I think for now I'll just recommend those two because they're the only two I can quickly think of off the top of my head, and I don't want to recommend anyone dodgy. So definitely those two though, and I'll link both of their channels. Um, in the description box. I hope that helps, that's just a few little tips. Another good thing you could do is get Coffee and Bible Times website because they actually have um, a new Bible study series that they've pulled out, um, which is gonna go across the year. And, and I've done session one and session two, and they were quite good and definitely good for new believers. So head over there if you're interested in that kind of thing. Okay, so the next question is, what made you change your Fiat? Love that car. So I used to have a little Fiat 500. It was amazing. I loved it. I could get in parking spaces like chef's case, um, especially when I was picking up Ryan from school. It was amazing because a lot of spaces don't fit regular cars, but a Fiat, you can worm your way in there, no problem. Um, so yeah, I did love that little car, but the problem that we had was that I am a mum of two boys and now that I'm teaching, I'm lugging a lot of bags back and forth and my children often when we go for walks want to take their scooters, want to take their bikes and toys and things with them. So it was just a very tiny car for a mum, but it was fantastic. And if it was just me running to work and back, that would be my car. But yeah, we have changed and I've now got a Grandland with a humongous boot which is just incredible okay so the last question that i'm going to answer is could you talk about how you got back into reading and finding time to read please okay so so i had a period of my life where i just the thought of picking up a book was like well when on earth am i supposed to do that i have no time to do this but what I started to do was keep it beside the chair that I often must sit in in the living room. So every time I was sitting in that chair, there was the book that I was currently reading. And more often than not, I would pick it up just like you do with your mobile phone when you see it sitting there. You just pick it up. Now that my children are getting older, it's easier. Um, it is hard when you've got little young ones because they want your attention most of the time. Now I find my children like to play Lego. They like to play with the car mat and with the little cars. And they want to play with each other, which is really nice so it gives me some time where I'm still in the room with them but I can read and I can still answer their questions and everything but I have time to read my books now so yeah if you've got little ones it is tricky and don't worry it'll you will find time again and like I said earlier I've just got a habit now of where I wake up and immediately make myself a cup of tea and then start reading my bible so that's how I stay consistent with reading the word of God Okay, I'm going to finish this video here because it is getting quite long and I know my camera card is pretty full as well, so I don't want it to cut out. Okay, thank you so much for all of your questions. I really appreciate that you took the time to ask them. If there's anything else you want to know, please just message me on Instagram. I'm at the Faith Lady, and I will try my very best to answer those questions for you. But I hope you've enjoyed this little Q&A and I'll see you next time. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.